New York-based nanonuclear energy is one of just a few ventures aiming to make small modular nuclear reactors a reality as the shift towards alternative energy sources continues. In the case of nano, they're developing reactors small enough to be transported via truck or train. The company was added to the Russell 3000 index earlier this month. And for more, we're joined by James Walker. He's the CEO and head of reactor development at Nano Nuclear Energy, joining us from Vienna, where the International Atomic Energy Conference is currently underway. James, thanks very much for joining us. And, and maybe for those who aren't familiar with this opportunity, uh, when did your company spot it? And, and, and how big an opportunity do you see here? Hi, John. Thanks for having me on. So um, it was a it was a number of years ago, uh, just before this sort of resurgent interest in nuclear energy. And um, we, we made a calculation internally that um, there was definitely going to be more of a focus in the markets um, on the energy sector. And where that focus was going to be was, was predominantly what we were, were looking at. And we realized that it, it would have to be nuclear, whatever the conclusion, because it was a, it was a system that would deliver baseload power, it could deliver it consistently, um, and it, it, you can put it anywhere. Like it's not, uh, it's not dependent on the new energy, the sun to shine, or the wind to, or wind conditions to be good. But when we looked at the nuclear industry and where we could fit in, we realized that at the microreactor level, um, there was the least uh, amount of development because larger reactor systems like small modular reactors, which is larger than what we want to produce, they were sufficiently well developed. But the micro reactor um, uh, space was much less developed. And we actually believed it was the much larger potential market because this was an area where diesel was catering to, um, but uh, they had no competition. But it was, this meant this meant mining projects, remote industry, remote habitation, island communities, you know, military bases, disaster relief areas, oil rigs. It, it just the list went on. It, potentially, we could produce thousands of these things a year, and you still wouldn't even meet a fraction of the global demand for these remote power sources. Hmm. Um, and they do, and they're not even in competition with anything else because. Um, you can't just put solar and wind or geothermal or hydro over you want or power transmission lines or even gas or coal pipelines. But this is when you're when you're providing power for smaller um, for small requirements in remote locations. You, it's just diesel reigns supreme. And we can actually we, we're confident we can beat out the price of remote diesel, too. Well, the video that we showed our audience just to even help further conceptualize this was quite helpful. I mean, if we're thinking of this basically, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, as almost like miniature mobile nuclear power plant um, uh, opportunities in a truck, um, I, I would. you went through a few different examples there of uh, certainly remote um, uh, areas where there could be uh, a market opportunity. D you talked about mining. I in terms of the kinds of customers that ultimately would uh, be rewarded by using this technology, is it going to be a lot of uh, the mining industry or, or to your earlier point, like disaster relief as well? Yeah, so certainly those sort of remote industries could benefit enormously. And some of our conversations with mining companies have actually started already because it's not just... Um, process heat from the reactor to concentrate ore in remote locations. It's also electricity for accommodation, electricity for charging vehicles. Um, and then and those and, and the, that sort of remote power can extend it way beyond sort of the ability of a mining company. So we've had some uh, number of conversations with governments in Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, um, and they've got hundreds of millions of people scattered across dozens of islands. Um, that all subsist on diesel generators because it's you can't just put big power stations in these sort of remote areas with where the footprint is really small. Mm. So that's a huge market there again. And um, we were recently just in Africa and we signed an agreement with the government of Rwanda. And they have population centers there that are very much removed from the grid that microreactors could deploy to where you, then suddenly you can have things like desalination, vertical farms, um, process heat for industry. And suddenly you can raise the quality of life in all these different areas. And that's not exclusive to Rwanda. That's that's across the continent and beyond. Um, so again, a hu huge potential market.